Ian, would you like to say a bit about what it's like being a councillor? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Dick's done a pretty good job of outlining the kind of nuts and bolts of it. Um, I mean, if you want a, a little bit on my background, I studied psychology uh, for the best part of seven years. I um, did a <coughs> master's degree in that um, towards the middle of the 80s. I then went and um, tried to make it as a musician for a while. Um, I probably, in some senses, I still am, but that didn't really work, or it hasn't really worked so far. Um, I then kind of fell into business uh, as a retailer, and I'd been I'd, do, I'd done that most of my life. I used to work in a um, in a clothes shop uh, as a Saturday boy when I was a kid. Um, you know, I, I came from a fairly working class family, um, and uh, we sort of and, then, and we moved, moved on from there. Fiona and I to um, this is Fiona, by the way. She's also a councillor, a district, a parish councillor. We um, we opened some market stalls in all the kind of best places: Camden, uh, Covent Garden, and uh, Greenwich, and we did quite well. And then when we moved to Oxford, um, we were actually not doing so well with the market stalls at that point. So we decided that we'd open a small shop in Oxford, which we did, and that did very, very well. And that led on to us opening um, seven stores and having a fairly large company with a kind of multi-million pound turnover. Um, and we operated that for some time, went through some ups and downs. Towards the end, more downs than ups because of the, um, the problems with the economy that were hitting us. Um, and then around uh, 2011, the reason that this is the, the apocryphal story, or not apocryphal, but the kind of often trotted out story about how I got into the Green Party is I met um, Elise. Elise, who was at the time the um, the uh, Lord Mayor of London, um, and she turned up in all her mayoral finery at a um, a business uh, meal that I was in. Well, it was a kind of a drinks do at Christmas that I was invited to, um, and I'd, I've always been interested in environmental issues. I've always been an outdoors person. I probably always tended to be more left than right, um, although kind of hobbled in the middle, probably during my times as a, as a rather sort of filthy businessman who was probably had more of an eye on money than I did on social issues. But I, I worked in a housing co-op. Um, I helped set up one of the largest housing co-ops in London in the 80s when I was a student. So I had that kind of background anyway. So I was talking to Elise um, and I said, you know, I'd always vote to Green, mainly because I couldn't decide who else to vote for. Um, and the Greens seemed to sort of tick a box for me in terms of, you know, outdoors experience where I'd always, you know, like to go up mountains and that sort of stuff. And I said, but the last few years, there's not been a choice where I live for a Green candidate. And she said, well, why don't you do it? And I said, well, at the moment, I'm not actually even in the party um, and I'm not even sure I could do it, you know. So, and I thought about this and I was coming to a point in my life where I thought, well, I've got no kids. Um, I'm not really going to leave anything behind me. Um, other than, you know, kind of business and that kind of stuff. Um, so I felt like I needed to do something to make the world a better place, for want of a better word, if that doesn't sound too grand. Um, and I had a whole list of things I was going to do. And the first one was join a political party, and the Greens seemed to be the most likely one, or join a campaigning group. I mean, Dick said he's not a campaigner, but I am. I always have been quite a campaigner. Um, you know, I campaigned in London. I um, we When we moved here... Uh, to Oxford in 1993, a year later, they tried to build a tarmac factory on our doorstep, literally on our doorstep. Um, and we, I brought all my cooperative, um, housing cooperative sort of uh, mechanisms and, and experience to bear. And we, and Fiona and I ran a local campaign to get that stopped and we, and we won and we, and we beat them. So I was kind of in that frame anyway, even though I'd sort of diverted off into um, commerce to some extent. So I felt slightly uncomfortable with the fact that I was promoting quite a lot of um, consumerism for the sake of it, because I was in the jewellery business, and we still are, to, to a smaller extent. And obviously, it's not a particularly vital industry, but, you know, it's, it was a, it's an economic driver. Um, so, you know, squaring all those sorts of circles. Um, so I joined the Green Party and didn't do very much. Stood in lots of paper candidacies like Dick did every year. You know, we wanted somebody to stand in all the various parties, all the various um, various seats. Um, and then uh, in 2015, due to a kind of quirk of circumstances with the local party, mainly in the fact that the person that 
that had been nominated to be our party political candidate didn't really want to do it because he very silly reason well not really a very silly reason he wanted to give up smoking and he thought the stress would stop him giving up smoking <laughs> oddly enough he still smokes um, and he's now joined the Labour Party but that's another story um, and he said there was another person that wanted to do it and he didn't want him to do it so he encouraged me to do it so I st stood and it's the first time I'd ever done anything like that and I wasn't particularly used to public speaking I was fairly used to performing but not actually public speaking because um, I'd done some acting as well and stuff like that um, so I stood in the 2015 election no, absolutely no chance of winning, but I went to 17 hustings and I think I kind of got kind of got the taste for it. Um, I've always liked an argument, as everyone, most people will attest. Um, so it was an opportunity there for me to sort of vent my spleen on some of the things. And I've always been, I think, pretty much coming from a, from a Thatcher period. I've always been vehemently opposed to the Tories. Um, I absolutely loathe the Tories. I know we shouldn't be tribal, but I am on that on that um, on that principle. So um, I stood in 2015, obviously didn't have a chance of winning. We came within 225 votes of keeping our deposit, which I thought was quite good. Um, and then it kind of all went quiet, really, until um, a couple of years later, we realised they were going to start um, the local council, the local district council, wanted to build on the green belt around this area. And it incensed quite a lot of people, and my campaigning um, bones started to come out again. So, so we kind of got involved in all of that. At that point, I didn't really know what, I mean, I knew there were county councils, district councils, parish councils, I'd stood for them all, but I had no idea what they did or what they were for or, or what the kind of structure of local government was. So I learned pretty quickly. Um, I stood in 2018 and at that point, we, at 20, in 2017, we'd helped um, to get Leila Moran, the, the Lib Dem par, um, uh, par, parliamentary candidate elected mainly because she was very close to being elected anyway and the greens were just you know kind of kingmakers in that in that role so we felt it was a good idea um i did actually think of standing in that election um but fiona told me she would never speak to me again if i stopped a con uh, anybody getting rid of our local conservative councillor who's a conservative ca um uh mp who was completely useless um so that so we won that and we also achieved in that role in, uh, in that in that uh, deal a kind of agreement with the lib dems that we would try and work together in the future um and then in 2018 when all this stuff with the building stuff turned up i mean i had some conversations with dick because he it was his kind of area and i got a little bit of understanding of what was actually going on and how the various processes worked with planning and that kind of stuff so i stood seriously in 2018 and we went out and we campaigned and we knocked on doors and we produce leaflets. I approached it being a lifelong retailer as a, as a, um, a marketing exercise. So we, we produced leaflets that I'd been used to designing in, as part of my store um, experience. Um, and I, prior to that, I'd actually gone to see the Lib Dem candidate for a drink with the intention of basically standing down um, in the most sort of face saving way that I could think of, because I knew that I didn't have a chance of winning. Or I didn't think I did. And I thought, well, he does. So I'll just go for a drink and I'll say, well, you know, I'll, I won't do anything. I'll leave you to it. And he suggested we work together on the different, the two different wards within this district, uh, the south, uh, sorry, the west and the east ward. So we did that um, and I came a fairly good second and he came first. Um, and then the following year we did it again. And I, having had that experience and having had more push behind me and having had more of a profile because I'd been camping, campaigning quite heavily on the local issues with the, with the, the, the green belt. Um, I won and became the first um, district councillor in Charwell for the Greens, uh, and which was quite a shock because I think I remember waking up the following day after I'd been elected thinking, what have I done? <laughs> Um, I was quite, I, I, I am still quite, I'm, I am, as I say, I am a campaigner, I enjoy the campaigning process and I enjoy, I, I suppose I enjoy winning, but when you actually win, you suddenly realise you've actually got to back it up with something. Um, so I remember going to one of the first meetings thinking I don't have a clue what any of this is. And unlike Dick, I didn't have any green uh, candidate uh, um, colleagues to kind of support me and tell me what we were doing. I did have the two Lib Dem that had also won in the same election. And we'd agreed to, to form a group and I luckily got on very well with them and we were all fairly green in the other sense that we didn't really know what we were doing so we kind of learned as we went along although the first proper meeting we had we brought a motion a very big motion to try and stop the building work around here which created a massive upsurge and uproar 
And I think that kind of set the scene. I mean, I know I take on board what um, Dick says about, you know, part of your role as a district councillor or as a councillor in general is to try and make, try and sort of make sure that the, the ruling group is, um, is kind of doing what it should do and, 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 you know, holding its feet, their feet to the fire. Uh, but um, in some senses, particularly when you're up against, I mean, it may be the same, it, it may be the same in the city, but certainly in the district council in Charwell, which is, I think, one of the most dysfunctional councils in Oxfordshire, um, you are basically there, in my opinion, to, 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 to reflect the incompetencies of that, gov of, of that local group. Um, they've they've had it their way very easily for so many years, where they basically just wave stuff through. They have most of them don't have a clue what they're doing. They don't actually bother to, um, to 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 look at any of the paperwork. They don't bother to hold any of the officers to account. They just take everything they say. Um, so they very quickly discovered that I and my the fellow members in my group, and we our group increased. We got a couple of independents in as well. Were going to be um, a bit difficult for them. Um, since then, they've brought in three different amendments to the Constitution to try and shut us down, mm -hmm. um, moving around when, when motions are going to be brought, um, reducing the, the number of motions, reducing the number of words in motions, all this kind of stuff that's, that's you know, being, I, we, we feel is fairly anti-democratic, but we've, you know, we've sucked it up and we've carried on. Um, so, uh, you know, in my sense, in, in my view, my role uh, in, in, in Charwell, it became very, fairly quick, fa fairly obvious, very quickly. I've tried to work with Labour over, over the two years I've been a councillor since 2019. Um, it hasn't really gone particularly well. Um, Labour tend to um, gaslight me, really. They keep telling me they're going, they want to work with me and it would be really lovely to do, lovely to do this and then we don't hear anything at all. Um, but we, they've supported a few of my motions. I've got what I got one. I've got one motion through in two years, and I've brought a motion to every single council, sometimes two, um, and that was on flooding, and that was basically just before the election, and it was a, a motion they couldn't really be seen to turn down because of the election being in the offing. Um, so, it, it, in my view, it, it, it sounds churlish, but it is basically to show the Conservatives up on a public platform for being as useless as they are. With the intent, with the intention, hopefully, to erode their majority, which is massive. Um, there's 31 of them, and there's, in terms of my group, there's five of us, and nine Labour members, and two independents. So it's a, it's an uphill struggle. And basically, if the Conservatives don't want to do something, it won't get done. So the intention of trying to work with them, and particularly as they're very old, mostly very old reactionaries, or quite young, some quite young reactionaries, is almost, you know, a, a, a pointless task, really. That said, um, then I stood for the um, county council this year and got elected, and it's a completely different kettle of fish because I'm now not on the opposition. I'm on the actually part of the um, controlling group. Um, it's early days. Uh, we're in a, an alliance with the Lib Dems directly, three, three Greens and I think it's 21 Lib Dems. And at the moment we're in a, we've got 13 Labour members that have, have also joined the alliance, although there will be a 14th one soon because there, there, has, there was a bit of a mess up over one of the election results, which I won't bore you with, but that will soon be corrected. Um, so it's a, it's a kind of work in progress. We're trying to feel our way through at the moment about how we work with these different groups. Um, it's a difficult one for me because obviously I'm, I, I tend to be, I've been very oppositional towards the city council Labour group, um, not least because I, I, you know, the fact that they've they've always been a problem to our green councillors, but also because I just fit, see a lot of what they do as being what I would say to, is Tory light. I mean, particularly the the building on, on the green belt around here is principally being driven by the city council because they insist that they can't meet their own housing needs, and they, you know, in my view, have a policy of not meeting them and would prefer to meet them on our on our green belt um, and generally enrich the local landowners and property developers. Um, so I have to kind of walk a line in the sense of not overtly criticising. I mean, I, I don't know how it's going to work at the moment. I've got into a few spats with Labour already of trying not to um, get into arguments with that, with my Labour colleagues. The Lib Dems are fairly supportive. I mean, they always have been since we, we started out our, um, our sort of adventure together. Um, but I still watch my back with those. I mean, it's a different it's a different situation in the 
uh, county council where we actually do have some roles to perform we do essentially we are going to be governing um, and I'm already sensing a little bit that perhaps there is a there is a tendency to sideline anybody that isn't a Lib Dem so we do really have to sort of stand up for ourselves on that on that um, on that front my main sort of role has been scrutiny um, because I am quite good at looking at paperwork and having come from a business background I can you know read balance sheets and, and find all the things that perhaps are either being hidden or not um, being uh, highlighted very much, or that uh, you know that 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 other councillors don't bother to read or don't bother to see, and that, that happens quite a lot. I bring stuff up in meetings, and you can see them all kind of going, "Well, we didn't see that." Um, and uh, on the so on the district council, I'm on scrutiny. I'm also on planning, although I'm only a sub on planning. Um, and I'm also on the um, standards um, committee, which basically looks at. Um, how how councillors um, act. So obviously I have to watch my step, which is quite difficult for me sometimes. And on the uh, county council, I'm on the, it's scrutiny, but it's called something else. It's got scrutiny and performance, although they're actually about to change that into three different committees. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be on that. And I'm also on the audit and governance committee, which again, you know, deals with um, you know the, the, the way the council operates and its um, and its uh, sort of financial controls and that kind of stuff, which I'm very interested in coming from the old administration which has been conservative since the beginning of time this is actually the first time in history that the conservatives haven't had any controlling interest in the council we are kind of looking for the skeletons in the cupboard and um, it's early days but we think we might have found one or two but um, you know more news on that when we know um, so basically that's it i mean in terms of what what have i what i have achieved as a district councillor Apart from my one motion that I got through, just being a, a being a thorn in the side of the Conservatives and holding them to account, I guess, and as publicly as possible, I tend to get as much stuff in the press as I can, uh, because as far as I can see, it's a kind of public arena that they need to be held to account in. Um, and on the county council, I can't really tell you that because I've only been a county councillor for a, a couple of months, and you know, time will tell. I'll, I'll tell you in a couple of days, maybe. Uh, now that you are on two councils. What is taking all your time and what would you like someone to do to help you if we had some volunteers? Um, we, as you probably know, I'm actually on five councils um, uh, because I accidentally got elected to, to um, two others at the same time as I got elected to the district council, mainly because I kind of stood for the two uh, local parish councils here as a kind of, <coughs> sounds awful, but it was a sort of a booby prize. I didn't expect to get onto the district, but I might get onto the uh, local um, parish council in Kidlington, which is a town council in all but name. Kidlington, as um, Julia will know, refuses to call itself a town, even though it's the size of some towns, uh, which actually has some disadvantages for it for all sorts of technical reasons to do with funding and police presence and all that kind of stuff. But it is a kind of completely verboten area for anybody in Kidlington. If you accidentally call it a town, you get terribly into terrible trouble. If you ever suggest that you might want to turn it into a town, you'll probably be lynched. So we get we steer away from that. Um, so I stood on, I got onto all those councils, and I also stood for Yarnton Parish Council, which is where I live. And Fiona had been a councillor on there for several years, um, and I got onto all three. And then I felt I couldn't really just sort of leave them. Uh, and then I was asked to join um, Gosford and Parish, um, Gosford and Walter Eaton Parish Council. And the main reason for this is because I'm I, there are, I'm lucky in a sense. Um, in my um, district, there are only three parish councils, uh, and I'm on all three of them now. Um, and it just made sense in the end because I go to their meetings anyway. Because as a district councillor, you're kind of expected to go to the meetings. There's a general expect. There's a general kind of um, uh, rule that, or a sort of protocol that they will ask you the questions in the early part of the meeting, and then you can go. Uh, in Gosford, they don't. They moved it to the end. I, I don't know if that was deliberate, but that's the way it is. And I always feel that if I turn up to the meeting and just ask some quest answer some questions and then go, it feels like I'm not showing any interest in everything else they do. So I ended up staying anyway. So in the end, Gosford said, well, why don't you just become a council? We've got two vacancies and you're, on, you're always here anyway. Paradoxically, since then, I've not been able to go to many meetings because they clash with lots of other meetings. So um, I, the only councillor I'm not, I, I'm now, I'm also now covered Gosf, um, Begbroke Parish Council, 
because it's in my county division. I haven't been to any of their meetings yet, and I don't intend to join their council. Um, you know, I'm not going to go around kind of uh, collecting councils. It seems to be looking a bit of a joke locally that I'm, you know, a collector of councils. Um, so in terms of what takes up most, I think the question was what takes up most of my time at the moment. I mean, a lot of it is casework, as Dick says, and it's, and I, you know, coming from a retail background, I see that as the, they are my customers and I have to look after them. And I apply many of the same principles. You know, sometimes I know I can't do anything, but if you keep giving them information and you keep doing and throwing, uh, and even if you, you're going back and saying, I've tried my best and I can't do anything, they feel like you've actually tried to do something. They've had someone listen to me. They've not been ignored. I don't want to be one of those counsellors that I, I try desperately not to. And unfortunately, in some senses, it's kind of why it's time taking over my life and I'm going to have to sort of try and be a bit more time careful with all this. Um, I don't want to seem to be one of those counsellors that gets elected and then you never see them again. Or, you, you know, they, they don't go to meetings, they don't do anything, they don't respond to emails. Um, because the overriding thing for me is that it, it, the reason I kind of did all of this was because I, and, and we were talking earlier about achievements, and I think Dick and I and every Green Councillor, including Fiona and everybody else that's got themselves elected, have achieved something in the sense that they've shown visibility for Green members and the fact that we can be elected and we and we... When we get elected, we produce results, which is why I feel like I have to kind of be out there doing what I said I'm going to do, because if I don't, it reflects badly on everybody. Um, so there's a fit, there is a sort of push for me to try and do everything. Um, so, yeah, casework takes up a lot of time, but you do feel like you have to apply your sort of personal um, attention to that. So in, sorry, in, in answer to your question going round around the houses, um, the larger stuff, things like planning, big planning policy. I mean, there's a 20, there's the 2040, is it 2040, um, Oxfordshire 2040. That keeps coming across my desk. And in fact, as I'm on scrutiny on Charwell, I've just had about 10 huge reports that I'm supposed to read before the scrutiny. And I know I'm never going to have a chance of doing that. So anybody that's got any kind of expertise in that, who can bullet point it, read it through, um, another thing came through to me today from, I think it was the Town Centre Planning Committee or something, it might have been something like that, talking about affordable housing in rural communities. I briefly skimmed it and it, to me, didn't look like it was anything new, but that's something that, you know, if, if those sorts of large reports come in and those sorts of large headline um, policies are being pushed by any of levels of councils, particularly district um, and county councils. It's useful for anybody that's got any expertise or, or interest in that to try and pick it apart, come out with some bullet points. We don't have to have absolutely every fine detail down, but when you go into a meeting, it's useful to have some ammunition, certainly if you're in opposition, but even if you're um, you know, part of the um, controlling group as I am now on the, the, the um, county council, you still have to know where you are because you will be opposed by the other group, which now is, is the Conservatives. And also, you know, we do need to hold ourselves to account as well. We can't sort of, particularly as we're in a sort of triumvirate um, alliance, we can't just assume that we're all going to do the right thing. Right? So it, there has to be some kind of understanding of all that. So um, I would say that that would be very useful um, on a larger scale. And obviously, if we're going to have sort of um, periodical meetings between councillors across the county and with members and with, you know, other people that are within support supporters and people who are supportive within um, the Oxfordshire Green Party who may have expertise in certain areas, that would be, you know, useful to, to have all this boiled down into, you know, I don't want to sound like Trump here, but, you know, a couple of pages with a, you know, some bullet points and stuff, and maybe things like, well, you know, if you need some more information, tell us and we'll go and find it, or this is where you can find it, that kind of stuff. That's what takes up a huge amount of time. Um, I mean, the really thing that takes up my, my time, as you can imagine, with five inboxes is getting through my emails. Um, but that's difficult for anyone to really help me with um, because I'd have to give you access to my inbox and I'm not allowed to do that. So I'll have to deal with that. F Fiona may be able to help me at some point. She's offered me to help me a few times, but we've not got round to the technicalities of that yet. But 